I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for uh, the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. This comes from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. Then Jesus began to say this to them Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is that this Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, doubtless you will quote me the proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here as uh, also in your hometown the things that we have heard you do that you did in Capernaum. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, no prophet is is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is this, that there are many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut three years and six months and there was a severe famine over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except the widow of Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in inner Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all of the synagogue was filled with rage. They got up and drove him out of town and led him to the brow of a hill in which the town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Through my time as a, a youth leader and into seminary and, and into my, my years of being a pastor, I've collected uh, and collected and or created um, about, about four dozen different prayer stations, um, prayer stations to use with kids, prayer stations to do, use at meetings, uh, <coughs> items that help us maybe get beyond our, our normal prayer, uh, prayer ways. And so I've often used these prayer stations on mass, but I've also used them in, in individual forms. One of the stations um, that tends to bring both the most tension and the most transformation involves a mirror like the one in the children's sermon. What you're asked to do is to stand in front of the mirror for one minute, staring at the reflection and thinking on this question. What do you see? A timer is literally set for 60 seconds because a minute feels like an eternity. It's uncomfortable to stand there and look at ourselves from head to toe and have to stare at the image that is reflected back. We tend to see, like I said in the children's sermon, the blemishes, the wrinkles, the hair out of place. We notice what isn't as good as we perceive those around us. The mirror can trigger all kinds of things for us and can lead us down a dark spiral of feeling. After the timer goes off, it's reset for one more minute. And this time, you're asked to repeat these words. I am loved by God, as you look into the mirror. What do you think happens in that second 60 seconds? It's true, they say mindset is everything. The way you look at things, how you address a challenge makes all the difference. In today's passage, we witness the mirror being lifted before the people of God. Jesus is holding up the mirror to the faithful gathered at the synagogue in his hometown. He's just read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah where the prophet is reminding God's people who are held in exile that there will indeed come a time 
when the anointed one will come to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and will let all the oppressed go free. Jesus declares that these promises, these long-held and longed-for promises, have now been fulfilled. Fulfilled in their hearing, in, the, in their gathering at the synagogue. It goes, to say, it goes on to say that all those who were there, who gathered there, spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words, the words that came from his mouth. All but a few. And it only takes one or two that can change the direction of the conversation. Hey, hey, isn't that Joseph's son? Isn't that that kid that used to play down the street and get all dirty? And, and, and isn't that the one that we've seen grow up? Isn't this the kid we witnessed grow up in our midst? How can he claim to be fulfilling this long held hope? The seed of negativity that begins to spread within the gathered community takes root. And at this, Jesus holds up the mirror of God's plan to those who have declared themselves to be the faithful ones. Jesus points to the past actions of the people of God. When it feels like God is distant or silent, when it felt like if life was too hard and too dark and too uncertain, what did you do? What have you done? Here Jesus is reflecting back to them that the difference between faithfulness and faithlessness is a very Line. At this, the anger of being called on the carpet, of being called faithless, of being labeled selfish within the sacredness of the synagogue is just too much. The rage over the perceived lack of respect leads the gathered community to intend violence upon the one holding up the mirror. The shame, the sin, that has been revealed takes on a palpable power that can and does even that does turn even the most faithful into a raging mob ready to literally hurl their own off a cliff instead of dealing with the reality of their own past actions their own unfaithfulness when we are faced with the reality of that mirror being held up to us, what do we do? I think the image before us of this mirror, uh, we fall into these two categories. We fall into the deflect or reflect. Deflecting the image before us in the mirror, we quickly brush off what we see there and blame others. It must be someone else's problem. It's not our fault for not showing up. It's not for not towing the line. For us not being faithful, for those not being faithful like us, we make excuses. I'm so stressed. I don't have the energy to do that thing right now. I have to take care of my home. There's nothing more that I can do. When we deflect the image that we see, we allow space for anger and frustration to build into that rage that blinds, that holds us captive, that causes us to believe that it's more important to save face than to face what is before us. The other option, so there's deflecting, the other option is to reflect what we see before us, to stand in that discomfort, to look at the cracks in our lives, not with judgment or with shame, but with honesty, integrity, and allow God's love to fill in those places once more to make us whole. And when we look at the reality, when we name the problem, when we have the willingness to address it with humility and seek healthy ways of moving forward together, we might still feel the anger and frustrations, but it won't take us off the cliff. helps us see the reality, and it helps us discern how to move in this moment, in this moment reflected there. Which brings us to today. In times of struggle, 
when we've encountered the dark and uncertain times of life, did we fold into ourselves for self-preservation, for that ability to save face? Or did we, might we, do we, seek to follow God's love into the unknown, but into the promise and the purpose of caring for our neighbors, for loving those who are in greater need than ourselves? Will we step up when others have chosen to retreat into themselves? Will we seek to share the love of God that has been pouring into our lives, regardless of whether we feel God or not? Will we live to be grace and allow hope to be our guide? Will we share the breath of life that God has placed in the midst of our bones and our bodies with those we encounter who are exhausted? frustrated, lost, and with those who are standing on the edge of the cliff, about to do the unthinkable. We find ourselves at the cliff's edge when we allow other things to take the place of God's love, when we choose to deflect what we see. Without love, Paul says, we are just senseless noise. We're nothingness attempting to pass ourselves off as powerful, faithful, generous. Yet all only for our own benefit. Without love, it's all about me at the expense of the we. Paul says love bears all things, it believes all things, it endures, it hopes all things, it endures all things. Love never If God's love in and through Christ is eternal, is available, is never-ending and constant, then whatever we are facing with and in this life, as we truly see it reflected in that mirror, and when we name the reality of the moment we are in time, we can face it with courage and confidence not in our own power, but as we trust that God's love is still creating the path, still making a way for us, still beckoning us to walk. Antonio Machado is a, a 20th century uh, Spanish poet, and he once wrote this. Traveler, there is no path. The path is made by walking. Traveler, the path is your tracks and nothing more. Traveler, there is no path. The path is made by walking. By walking, you make a path, and turning, you look back at the way you will never tread again. Traveler, there is no road. We make the road by walking, by walking together, by moving in faith, by living in hope, and most importantly, by embodying the love for one another and for for ourselves and for the world as we seek to be patient and kind and humble as Paul says looking and working for the good of the whole setting aside resentments and anger seeking truth and enduring all things because God's love never ends so what is it that God is reflecting for us reflecting before us today as individuals, as families, as a community, as living waters, as people longing to be faithful to God and good neighbors to the world, what is that reflection telling us? And are we deflecting it? Or are we truly reflecting on it and reflecting it into the world? Because remember, you loved by God. The path ahead may feel difficult, might feel hard to discern, but like looking into a mirror, what we choose to do, to deflect and deny what we see or allow that reflection to embolden us to once again walk humbly and faithfully with God. It's up to us to choose. Let us pray.
Lord God, as we look into the mirror of Christ, we are tempted to deflect and deny what we see for a variety of reasons. Help us to see your love reflecting from that image there, and move us to live out that image of love and faith and hope that we see in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray.